Android has a number of ways that you can protect yourself when you're out in the world, and I'm going to show you a few ways that you can be prepared next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello everybody and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. So I was thinking about my little trusty Android device here. And, you know, we've, I've talked a lot on the shows that I do about safety, but on the internet or safety on the device or privacy, that sort of stuff all on the device. What I started thinking about is there's a number of ways that our devices actually protect us or try to protect us in the real world when we're out and about. Say an emergency happens or we're caught off, you know, we're caught in a situation that we can't get out of. Say we've fallen and we can't get up. So that's what this episode is all about. I'm going to dive into a number of the different features that are, in some cases, kind of hard to find, um, that are sprinkled around that you can find. And you want to be sure that you have information in these places. So if something does happen to you, uh, people you know that could help you have the information they need to do so. So that's what today's episode is all about. Let's jump right in. So first of all, let's add some emergency information to the display, specifically in the lock screen. This is the quickest way for someone to help you. Uh, if you might be injured or, and they find your phone, you want direct access to the details that matter most to keeping you healthy in that situation. You can actually add a link to personal emergency information to your phone's lock screen, stuff like your blood type, allergies, medications, that stuff. So first, let's start with the pixel. Go settings, about phone, and then emergency information. And then in there, we're going to find a number of categories. Medical information, of course, offers a lot of specific options that could be incredibly useful. Blood type, allergies, medication. Um, if you want to put in your address and you feel like you're comfortable with that, having that accessible on the lock screen, fill all that out. Uh, and you, you can make sure that someone has that if they need it. There's also emergency contact, which is a person that you trust to be contacted if someone actually discovers you uh, and as well as your phone. So all of this information can be accessed without unlocking your device. And that's key because someone might discover you. They're not going to know how to get into your device. You just tap the emergency link button, which is on the bottom of my Pixel phone here from the lock screen, uh, this pulls up my emergency call interface, and then tap to view emergency info. It asked me to do this twice, just to be sure. And there, all of that information is easy to find uh, if needed. Now, you can also simply put a message on your lock screen. Maybe you don't want all of that information, but you want a single message, like I can be called here, or call this person here, or something like that. Go settings, display, lock screen, and then lock screen message is the field you're looking for. And this is just a single text field. And you can add text there and it will appear on your lock screen like this fake 555 number. Uh, this might be best used for something simple, right? Email address, a phone number, a simple instruction, that sort of thing. It does appear as a single line on the lock screen, though. So if you have a lot of information in there, you're welcome to put it there. It's just it's going to scroll into view. Maybe when you put information there, make it make sense, not the gobbledygook that I used. Now, on Samsung, of course, Samsung loves to do things just a little bit different, right? They, they do the same, but in a different fashion. Samsung's only way to put medical information on the lock screen, it doesn't have the first part that I showed you. It only has the single field. So you go settings, lock screen, contact information. And then there, again, you can just jot down any information that you want to be displayed in that single field uh, that's presented. That will now appear on the phone display when it's locked from the lock screen. Let's say it's far less organized, which is kind of surprising for Samsung. I would imagine they would have gone with the full bells and whistles. They didn't in this case. But still, you can put the most important information there and make sure that someone sees it. Now, emergency broadcasts notifications. This is when uh, something major is happening in the area that you would want to know about. Is there an amber alert or is there, you know, a, a, I don't know, some sort of a, a major like a catastrophe or something along those lines. 
you want to make sure that you get emergency broadcasts on your device uh, when they come through, right? So on most Android devices, this is done by going to settings, apps and notifications, advanced, and then wireless emergency alerts. And this is where you can toggle alerts for emergency messages, amber alerts, disaster warnings, threats, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you could also set a reminder here. So if you set a reminder of two minutes, every two minutes you'll be alerted to this message so that if you were away from your phone before, now that you're back, you go, oh, well, I guess there was a message waiting for me. Now, again, on Samsung, they do it a little bit differently. This time it's a little strange. It's embedded into Samsung's own messages app. So you go into Samsung's messages app, you tap the three dots, settings, and then emergency alert settings. And there you will find the list of the alerts that you can activate, similar to what I just spoke about, uh, how you'll be notified if you want a reminder, all that stuff. It's the same controls, very different way of finding them. And unfortunately, it seems that if you set a different, like a third-party messaging app as your default, you're probably not going to get these. So keep that in mind. Uh, emergency services and location sharing. This is important because when you think about phone, uh, landline phones, right, uh, that we've had, that we had, I don't even have a landline here anymore, but when you called 911 from a landline, they would immediately know where you're calling from. Through cell towers and stuff, they can get a general sense of where you are, but it's not nearly as specific as it was when you were calling from landline. They've, you know, they've improved it over the years, but this is one way to make it very specific. So uh, you go settings, location, advanced, emergency location service. And you just want to be sure that that's turned on. I'm pretty certain that this is turned on by default, but if you don't have your location settings uh, dialed in properly, or maybe you're kind of uh, anxious about activating all of your location services, it's possible that this wouldn't be on. So you want to make sure it's on by default. If it's off, again, the cell towers, towers they can triangulate for the most part, um, but it's not as specific, not as accurate as what you get here. So it's important to look at that and know if you're protected. All right, the next one is earthquake protection. And this one's actually really cool. It's uh, running in California for the most part in, at the moment, um, but you should have the settings already and it's gonna open up throughout the year. Go settings, location, advanced, and earthquake alerts. And with this, basically Android devices are opting in to uh, offer up their accelerometer readings to be part of Google's earthquake detection server. And the idea here is that all of these phones opted in in a single geographic location. If they all start to get a little bit of a shake, then there's more certainty that an earthquake's about to happen. And it just increases the data around this. It can notify everybody and tell everybody, hey, earthquake is coming protect yourself. Uh, we actually just had a test of this system. There was a 4.5 magnitude earthquake in, in Los Angeles a couple of days ago. Google's Dave Burke tweeted out a map of the region that actually animates to show the number of devices all lighting up as they became seismometers during the earthquake. Really cool stuff and a good illustration of what goes on. Now, for the user, when an earthquake is happening, your phone will actually switch over to a screen and unleash a loud, unmissable bell <laughs> to warn you to drop, find cover, and then hold on there. And that alerts you while the earthquake is happening so that there's no guessing what you need to do. Find some cover and stay there. Uh, Google plans, like I said, to open this up to different regions, and I hope that they do that soon. Now, on my Pixel... I have an app created by Google. Uh, called, it's the personal safety app. In, in my app drawer, it's just there as safety. And if you're on a Pixel, you have access to this app. And it's actually really cool. You can go into settings to, to of course, you know, do what we've already done, which is access the medical information and emergency contacts uh, that we set up earlier. There's a shortcut and a way to do that within this app. But there's a whole lot more there to discover. Car crash detection which is really uh, interesting, kind of similar to what uh, Google's doing with the earthquake detection. Uh, this uses the device's sensors, that's location, motion sensors, and mic audio to detect when you may have encountered an automobile accident. 
And if it detects this, the device begins vibrating furiously and asks if you're okay. And you can say, you can speak, because you might not have the phone in your hands. You might be incapacitated. Uh, but you can say, I'm okay, and that'll stop the system. Um, if you don't, or if you say, you know, call emergency or whatever, uh, an alarm is going to sound. You'll be asked if you're okay, and you can answer with your voice, and you can say, I'm not okay, or call emergency. Car crash detected. Say, emergency, to call 911 now. Otherwise, say, cancel. Emergency. You said, emergency, calling 911 now. Uh, and that will happen. If you happen to be incapacitated, this will handle the call to emergency services for you. And everything that we've already set up will tell them exactly where you are. Um, and uh, you... This works whether you say anything or you say nothing at all. At some point, it switches over. It has kind of like a timeout portion. It says, okay, something bad must have happened because I'm not hearing a response. So really interesting way to protect you if you get into a car accident. Also, another feature here is safety check. And the idea here is maybe you're going out for a walk or a jog and it's dark outside and you want to let somebody else that you trust be kind of like your your check. Essentially, your phone is going to allow you to select a person, a trusted contact in this case, uh, and you can choose a set of them or just one, set an amount of time, so maybe this run is going to last you an hour, uh, and begin to share your location. It's like location streaming to them. So they can follow your progress. They'll know where you are or the last point at which your phone knew where you were. And they can track your location throughout that time. Uh, if the time runs out, you'll be asked if you're okay. And you can respond and say yes. You could cancel it earlier than that and say, all right, I'm done, and not even notify the person. Uh, that way, uh, if you are not okay, they can check in on you, or the phone will do it for you if you don't respond. So again, another way that the Pixel phone is kind of checking in on you. And Along those lines, emergency sharing is another feature that's here, which simply sends a message to your trusted contact uh, along with your location information uh, so that maybe they can check in on you or send help if you need it. And it's all very easy to fire off. Now, finally, what about contact tracing or exposure notification? Of course, here we're talking about COVID-19, which is uh, what we're all dealing with right now. This is the idea that Android and iOS devices can kind of band their technology together to allow people to be notified uh, when they cross paths with someone who has been identified as having COVID-19. Or if you have are, are diagnosed with COVID-19, you can put it in this app so that any people's paths that you've crossed will be notified to say, hey, you've crossed paths with someone who has or had COVID-19. You should get tested just to be sure. So pretty cool idea. Uh, settings for exposure notifications have rolled out already. You go to settings, Google COVID-19 exposure notifications, and you must opt in in order to be part of this network. It will be opted out uh, initially, and your location needs to be turned on. You also have to have Bluetooth. That's how the the device-to-device uh, -device, uh, transmission is happening. It's via Bluetooth. Um, but guess what? You can only turn on this feature if you have a supported app uh, running that's tied into it. So you wanna make sure that you're looking for an official app that covers your region. In California, that app that I found is California COVID Notify. It's officially supported by the Department of Public Health. Uh, with it installed, I will be notified if I have any COVID-19 exposure risk. Uh, I can also notify others if I have been infected with COVID-19. However, the app itself, at, at least at the time of this recording, has 100 installs. And something like this requires so much more than that. So uh, I, I suppose we'll see how effective this becomes. We're already a ways into COVID-19. I have to imagine that this needs to be further along, but it's taken a while to build up these systems, so I understand. Um, I just don't know how much how much uh, people really know about this or want to opt into that because some people feel it's kind of a uh, violation of, of their uh, privacy. 
So I, again, it all goes back to what you feel comfortable with. I hope these tips have helped you a little bit to know how to use your device to protect your personal safety when you're out and about in the world. And I'm sure I've missed a few things. And if I have, send me an email with what I missed. Uh, hands on Android at twit.tv. Or you can hit the show page to subscribe, twit.tv slash HOA. There you can find links to all the podcatchers. Link out to YouTube. Subscribe there. Uh, and we hope that you do. Thank you so much for watching. Big thanks to John Ashley for editing all of this together. And we'll see you next week on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Want more Twit? Check out Tech News Weekly, twit.tv slash TNW. Tech News Weekly is a show where Jason Howell and I bring the latest and greatest interviews to you from the people making and breaking the tech news. Twit.tv slash TNW.